We understand that fundamentally a malignant population, such as the uh, population of CLL cells in any patient's body, any individual patient's body, is actually not uniform. It's composed of multiple subpopulations. And those multiple subpopulations continuously compete with one another, evolve, and create a tremendous degree of diversity. That means that one of the challenges, therapeutic challenges, is that in each patient, we're dealing not with a single disease, but rather with a collection of thousands of diseases. Each subclone that is distinct genetically or in other features represents its own therapeutic challenge. And, and with this perspective, it's not surprising to understand that our therapies can sometimes fail, right? Because even if they're very good, they still address 99.9% .9 of these thousands of different diseases and leave enough of those diseases behind to come back uh, and adapt to therapy. Um, so I think that's one of the important messages. Now, with new genomic technologies, we can survey this genetic complexity like never before and do this at large scale from uh, uh, large uh, cohorts of patients and start understanding sort of what are the fundamental rules that drive this process forward. Um, um, and, and essentially our work throughout this time um, uh, has really tried to dissect this process and to show that by looking at the evolutionary perspective, combining it with genomic methods, we can infer the past history of disease. We can understand what are the critical signposts or steps that the disease has to go through um, throughout its evolutionary course. And we can use this information to start predicting its future. Um, and, you know, today in real world, people are applying data science approaches to predict outcomes. They do this uh, to advertise better. Uh, they do this to buy stocks uh, a, 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 in a better way. They do this uh, to predict what's going to be the next uh, flu uh, uh, strain that we need to vaccinate again. And, and we haven't leveraged the power of this data science approaches uh, as much as we perhaps could have in cancer so far. Um, we treat patients uh, uh, rat relatively statically. We provide them with one treatment regimen um, and then take years uh, for us to evaluate in clinical trials. And we need to start re rethinking this problem a little bit. So I think that's um, sort of the, the general framework. Um, within this framework, we've also explored non-genetic uh, sources of diversity. Um, we know that genetics are very important to evolution, but we need to consider all ways in which information, right? And, and evolution is essentially a process of propagating information. A parent propagates information to its child, essentially. So we need to think about all of the information that is transferred. Some of it is the genes, but some of it is what we call epigenetics. Those are modifications of the genome that are also heritable and uh, make important decisions about cell identity. Some of it is, is uh, spatial location. Um, we inherit from our parents not only our genes, but also the fact that we are born in the same house, in the same neighborhood, in the same city. The same thing is true for cancer cells. And we need to capture all of those layers of information to understand the evolutionary process. And, and I think the last point is the, this idea that we can um, uh, start measuring clonal kinetics directly in patients. So to um, move to the next level of data science based therapy, where we understand that each patient's disease is composed of multiple clones. Now we can start measuring the rate of growth of each one of those clones with each one of our therapies, and give it to an algorithm to come up with an optimized therapeutic approach, algorithmically driven therapy which I think is a, a radical extension of the precision medicine paradigm.